Chloe, it's a new chapter, a very grown, self-assured, confident chapter. How are you feeling stepping out into the world alone right now? Oh, wow. I am feeling very liberated and very free. And, you know, it's been a great time for me. I have just been working really hard and, yeah, putting myself first and just grinding. So were you were you nervous or self-conscious at all in the lead up to the release of Have Mercy? Or are you in a place now where your confidence just can't be shaken? I was very nervous. I was so nervous. And the thing about it is, you know, we were working on edits till up to the last second for Have Mercy. and. Then knowing that I had the VMA's performance literally two days after it came out and I didn't know if people would like the rest of the song, if they felt it was overhyped on TikTok for so long and like it just didn't live up to everyone's expectations. I was nervous about all of that. So we, are you are you somebody that goes through comments and were you were you reading fan reactions in real time when the video went up? Yeah, I love connecting with my fans online and you know that's the thing like in order to see what everyone's saying I have to scroll through things and read them and I think that's when I'm like oh oh when I run into the negative things and I'm like no oh, no abort 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 <laughs> how do you do how do you deal with that when you're navigating through obviously all the love are you somebody that is affected if you see something that is is negative or can you just scroll past it Five times out of 10, I am affected. So it just depends on my mood. Like if I'm already feeling really confident that day and really proud of myself, I'm like, I brush it off. But if I'm already feeling a bit weak mentally, then it'll really, really affect me. So it just depends. But I'm happy I always have my godmom and, you know, my brother and my family to really just lean on who just kind of pick me up and remind me that you can't really please everybody like of course because I give my all into my craft and you know I really put so much time and I work so hard I expect everyone to like what I do but it's literally impossible say I did everything perfect which no one else can but say I did still not everyone would like it and I think that's something that all of us as human beings have to realize that we can't please everybody but as long as we please ourselves then it's all right love that can we talk about something that was perfect though your VMA performance in the in the hot pink bodysuit, you seemed like yes. you seemed like you were in your element on that stage. I was, I was. Did do you watch your own performances back in awe of what you've done? I watched them back, like nitpicking everything. Like, okay, I could have done that better. I could have done that better. I did that in rehearsal better. Oh, I did it better here live. All these different things. So you know, I am so proud of myself with that performance. I did a trip. God is good. I sang. I was like, whoo. But, you know, I can't wait for more and to just keep upping my game and perfecting my craft and my performing and my dancing and all of that. You said um, that you feel liberated. Is it is it freeing being up there on a stage on your own where it's all about you expressing yourself is that is that very freeing after being part of a duo for so long anytime I'm on the stage whether it's with my sister and I are even just by myself. It is so liberating and so freeing. But I think what made it feel more, even more freeing this time was because people were seeing the complete me and I didn't really have to hold back anything. I could just close my eyes and kind of really lose myself in the music. The beautiful thing that Sis and I is that we harmonize together. We have to blend. We have to be aware of the other and really stay in tune. But when it's just me up on that stage, I can literally just lose myself and do whatever I want and sing whatever I want and move however I want. And I could just like let literally let the music take control of me. So do you feel like you're not, you don't get to 100% be yourself until you're by yourself? No, I am always a thousand percent myself. I think it's just the perspective that people see of me, right. you know, like even within the group, I've always showed my body the way that I do now. If you look back at our group photos, my outfits are still very similar to how it is now. But for some reason, when I was on my own, it caused a bigger uproar and I'm 23. So I don't know. Do you know what? I want to talk about that, actually, because there was there was this period where I think you were coming into your own and you were growing up and obviously we've seen you grow up and there were people that seemed to as you say respond with a bit of uproar to that liberation what what is your message to those people that seem to forget that you are a grown woman that can express her sexuality and femininity as she pleases my message to those people hmm thank you for watching 
thank you for tuning into what I'm doing. It helps me and, you know, I hope you enjoy it somehow, some way, you know, but, you know, I have always been the same ever since I was a little girl, even my performing and how I perform. It's even been the same within the group with Hallie and I and what was the last live performance we had before Global Citizen? It was the Verizon Up performance. And I still was just as passionate and fiery. And I remember even before I went on stage that day, I was so angry. And that was my outlet. Like when I create music, when I'm on the stage, it's so therapeutic for me. So I think that's what people are feeling, like all this passion I have bottled inside. Because on a normal day to day, I don't communicate my feelings I don't articulate if something is upsetting me it's harder for me to use my voice when it's on a personal level it's crazy to hear you say that like you were angry I can't even imagine that what what makes Chloe Bailey angry what makes me angry um rude people when people take advantage of me and do you get that a lot when people when people aren't kind you know I think as I'm growing I'm learning that I can't expect people to give the love and give me back what I give out. I think that's one of the biggest learning lessons that I've had to teach myself and learn is that people won't always give the love that I give. And I can't expect people to do that because that's not fair to them either. So it's really on me to kind of control my heart and my emotions and my feelings and really set boundaries for myself and how far I am willing to go and give of myself instead of putting the blame on others. But that's what kind of, it's, it takes a lot to get me upset. It takes a lot. Like I'm a pretty chill person. I don't yell. Even when I'm upset, I get really quiet and I shut down. It, it seems like your perspective has been uh, steered by your big sis, Beyonce. Like how much of the wisdom that you carry was given to you by her? A lot of it. You know, Beyonce inspires me so, so much. I truly, truly love her. And because of her, I am here today. And people are watching me. Like, I remember I was five years old in the stands watching her perform along with Missy Elliott and Alicia Keys. But I just remember seeing her and I'm like, that's what I want to do. So without her, I would not be here she has inspired me. My family inspires me. My godmom inspires me. Um, there's just so many incredible women in my life that remind me daily how I am special and how I should never settle for less. I love that. Did, did Beyonce give you feedback on your VMA performance? Because it, it was a performance that surely even she would have been proud to deliver. Yeah, it just warmed my heart to hear from her during that time and to just know I had her support and her love. Like, she's the queen of everything, the way she performs, the way her presence is on stage. Like, she's incredible. And I just, I've always looked up to her. Let's talk about you and you and little sis, you and sis, uh, Allie. as you call her. <laughs> um, as I said, we watched you grow up, but you are big sis. What are some of the lessons that you teach her or the things that you try to steer in her life as her as her big sister especially now as you as you're doing things individually oh wow honestly even though Hallie's my little sister she has taught me so much really yeah and she's even taught me so much about myself and the one thing I admire about her is how outspoken she is and how she's never afraid to speak her mind and, you know, we always joke and laugh about it all the time, how people think my persona is and how I go back to and clap back with people. It's how Hallie is in real life and how people think she is on externally is how I am in real life. So we laugh about it all the time because it's like we're yin and yang. And I just I love her fiery spirit and how she's she's always like thinking of the next step and. You know, she's just always planning things out and she's so smart. And I think just knowing how much fire she has and how much she won't back down no matter what, that's what has inspired me, so, even being the this Hallie's the one with the clapbacks. Um, yeah, she's great at them. And I'm, learnt, I'm trying to get to her unbotheredness level. Do you know what? I can see that. I can see she's got that energy in her eyes. Is she is she ever like over your shoulder telling you how to reply to like trolls online? No, no. She'll just do it for me and I'll go online <laughs> and see it and I go, Hallie. 
She goes, what? I couldn't, I couldn't not say anything. Like if there's someone who she knew, who she knows has treated me bad or even looked at me a certain way, like she'll go, hi, and like move on to the next. So you don't play. Cause she's an Aries oh. and I'm a cancer. So if she's like the her and I'm like the, <laughs> like that's the two of us. Yeah, I'm an Aries, so I know exactly what you mean. Um, and he, okay, you know, I, know that, I didn't have to explain yeah, it to I know, you. I know about the Ram energy, man. You ain't got to explain. Yeah. Um, now, is is the two piece something that you guys will continue to return to? Do you think that just throughout your careers? Absolutely. Just because we go off and do our own solo things doesn't mean that we're broken up. And, you know, when Sis went to London, we didn't break up. And, you know, in that time, we both had separation anxiety. And I was like, I miss my sis. What do I do? What do I do? And I had to do a lot of soul searching to, like, figure out, okay, what's my purpose? I didn't really know who I was without my sister. And I had to really find that. And within the music, music has literally saved my life. I say that every time. And people always ask me, well, what does that mean? And I never want to get too deep into it because if I do, I'm going to start crying. But, you know, I found myself in the music and it's like, it's been very therapeutic for me. And I just was sitting on it and making music. I was like, well, I can't just have it sit on my hard drive, you know? And we were apart for so long. So I was like, well, maybe it's time. So then that's what happened. It's, it is incredible to see you kind of flourish on your own terms um, by yourself. It's, it's incredible to watch this, this journey, which is for you as a solo artist, just beginning. What is the vision for, for you in terms of your solo career? What, what do you want this to, to be when you look back on it? I want people to remember me as a good person, number one, a great performer a great producer, a great singer, and just a fantastic entertainer, you know? I just want, when people think of me, I want them to think of a star, a legend in the making. I'm nowhere, absolutely nowhere near there at all, but that's what I'm working towards. Love that. And finally, we've got to talk about uh, Booty So Big, Lord Have Mercy, the greatest opening to a song ever. Uh, for anybody who has aspirations of a booty so big that people have Lord, ha that, say, that makes people say Lord Have Mercy, can you let us know, is it just jeans or is there a regime? Can I be honest? I think it's just jeans because I love food. Like I eat food all the time. And for me, when I eat my weight doesn't go to my stomach. It'll go to my butt, thighs, and my arms first. So no squats, nothing, just just genetically. When I'm in the gym, it'll tone it up and lift it up a little more. But I, it's mostly jeans. And that's like, I don't want to like sell this fake thing like, oh, I work so hard for this because some women, all of, all of our bodies are completely different. I'm so grateful that I have a butt. But there's also the downside of that where sometimes I think my thighs are too fat. Sometimes I think, I naturally have these dents in my arm and my bones on both my arms from a baby. And it's like, if I gain even just two pounds, like you'll see the dents even more. I can never get rid of those. So it's like these little things that we all go through, no matter how people, no matter how confident someone might think I am, we all have our own insecurities and our own bodies and we should learn to love them and not try to look or be like someone else. So when people are like, I want your body, I'm like, no, you don't. Cause I'd be gaining weight like that. How, how do you stay sane when you like, when you have these things that you feel about yourself and you are constantly out there, you're on the internet, you're, you're on IG as we love to see when you're on your, when you're on your stories, how do you stay sane when you critique yourself anyway? God, because I'm like, it's, it's, it's more of a personal connection. I'm not a very religious person, but I'm like, if I say everything that God has created is special and beautiful, I'm completely contradicting myself by thinking otherwise of myself. And so I constantly have to remind myself that I am enough, no matter what life might tell me, no matter what other situations I might go through will try to tell me and discourage me, I am enough. Oh. Let me hit you with the clips. Mm, mm, mm. Chloe, thank you so much for joining us on The Dotty Show. Uh, next time you're in London, please come see us in person. Uh, until then, nothing but love from us, ma'am. I would love that. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mwah. Take care.